Follow Name Explain on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, as well as joining my Facebook group, Friends of Name Explain, where you can chat with myself and many other name nerds. Check out the links down below. If, like me, you watched a lot of American television growing up, but weren't actually from the land of the free, then you probably heard the term Ivy League all of the time, but had no real clue what it actually meant. Like, I know it relates to universities in the USA to some degree, and it might be the prestigious ones, but other than that, I'm absolutely clueless. So, what exactly is the Ivy League, and why is it even called the Ivy League? I guess the first thing we really need to answer is what universities are even considered to be part of the Ivy League. Well, despite how well known this term is across the globe, the Ivy League itself consists of just eight universities found in seven states of the USA. These eight universities are Harvard found in the state of Massachusetts, Dartmouth found in the state of New Hampshire, Yale found in the state of Connecticut, Cornell and Columbia both found in the state of New York, the University of Pennsylvania found in, well, Pennsylvania. Princeton found in New Jersey, and Brown found in Rhode Island. Chances are you have probably heard of at least one of these universities, whether it be Fraser Crane talking about his time at Harvard, or Andy Bernard constantly rabbiting on about his experience at Cornell. There's lots of things that connect these universities together. You have probably noticed that all of these unis are in the northeast of the USA, but beyond this they are all pretty old universities too some of the oldest in the nation in fact. But the main thing that actually brings these eight universities together into the Ivy League is actually sports. Something I didn't know before diving into this video is that the Ivy League is first and foremost all about sports and athletics, not about the academic quality of these institutions. The Ivy League is actually an athletics conference between these eight universities, with there seemingly being a focus on sports like basketball and American football. The fact that it's sports that actually unites the Ivy League really helps us make sense of the latter part of this name, league. Sports are often played in leagues like the Premier League for football in the UK or the competitive eating league of Major League Eating. Yeah, that, that really exists. The Ivy League sports ties mean that while these universities are gifted academically and are some of the highest regarded universities in the USA, there are other universities in the USA which aren't part of the Ivy League that are seen as being equal to them or even surpass them from an academic standpoint. Point. Many lists of the state's best universities do not have an Ivy League uni as their number one, with that honour instead in many cases going to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, known more commonly as MIT. Other highly regarded non-Ivy League universities in the states include the likes of the University of Chicago, John Hopkins University, and the University of California, Berkeley. I just feel it's worth highlighting this fact as I presume that the Ivy League was the be-all and end-all in regards to to uni in the USA, but that really isn't the case. Perhaps the thing the Ivy League is most linked with, however, is affluence. The Ivy League universities are seen as the ones that the wealthy and affluent go to. And to begin with, it was just white, affluent men who went to these universities. It took centuries for women and people of colour to be allowed access to these universities. Even as recently as 1970, an alumni of Dartmouth University wrote to the college saying, for God's sake, for Dartmouth's sake, and for everyone's sake, keep the damn women out. Out. Thankfully, more non-white male people do go to these universities today, but the stats seemingly still go in favour of the posh white boys. So how exactly did these old universities come together to form the Ivy League? Well it seems it all has to do with just how old these universities are, well old for USA standards anyway. Universities like the University of Bologna and Oxford are way older, like even older than the concept of the USA, just saying. Harvard was founded in 1630 and is the oldest and first university in the USA. This has made it incredibly prestigious and before too soon, other universities started being established in the northeast of the USA. All of the universities of the Ivy League, minus Cornell, predate Washington's presidency, meaning that 7 out of 8 of them, like Oxford and co, are actually older than the USA itself. Their age also explains to us why they're all in the northeast of the states, because this is the part of the USA that was first 
colonized by the British and Co. Even to this day, this part of the states is referred to as New England. Yet despite how old these universities are, the concept of the Ivy League and that name unto itself is actually relatively new. The term Ivy League first appeared in the 1930s, with the oldest recorded evidence of it coming in about 1933, and the league itself only came into being properly in the 1950s, with the league becoming a member of the NCAA, meaning the National Collegiate Athletics Association, in 1954. This means that the name wasn't formed at the same time as the league itself. The name had been around for a few decades prior to its founding in the 50s. So, where on earth does the name of Ivy League actually come from? The ivy in the name, of course, relates to the ivy plants that are grown up the walls of many of these universities. Why it was decided to have ivy growing up the walls of these universities, however, we didn't seem to be too sure. Ivy is a plant with all kinds of connotations, from being a symbol of devotion, fidelity, and loyalty. Crowns of ivy have also become linked with poetry and muses. This could be why it was chosen to be grown at universities, due to these links with poetry and the arts. Or maybe it was just because it looked pretty, who knows. The the most popular story as to why this ivy growing on the walls became the namesake for this league is seemingly attributed to one Stanley Woodward, a sports writer for the New York Tribune. The story goes that his colleague, one Caswell Adams, was bored of having to cover the college football being played by these universities, instead wanting to cover the sports played by Fordham University, which he was an alumni of. Annoyed with having to watch teams like Harvard and Brown, he said aloud in the office, Do I have to watch the ivy grow every Saturday afternoon? This was a reference to the ivy that grows at these unis, and potentially a play on the idiom watching grass grow, which means something is very boring. Caswell Adams said that without too much thought, but fellow sports writer Stanley Woodward was sitting at his nearby typewriter. He overheard this comment, and it tickled him. He played around with the ivy in his head, thinking of terms like the ivy Ivy Group before landing on Ivy League. This tickled Woodward as at the time in the 30s the universities that would become the Ivy League didn't like the idea of actually being part of a league, so calling them that was a jab at that aspect of them too. Yeah, this name was initially conceived as a dig at these prestigious universities before they applied it to themselves as a badge of honour. Woodward eventually used the term in a 1933 article in the New York Tribune and it caught on pretty quickly, so the coining of this term comes from Stanley Woodward and Caswell Adams, though Adams didn't realise what role he was playing in the creation of the term when he casually said about watching the ivy grow. This is the most popular story in regards to the origin of the name Ivy League, but another one has proven popular too, but it is seen as ultimately untrue. There's a pretty popular folk etymology about this name that claims it derives from the Roman numerals for the number 4, I, V. This 4 relates to the 4 original schools of this league. Harvard, Yale, Princeton and Dartmouth. Eventually the Roman force started being pronounced as IV and then got corrupted into the name of the plant, Ivy. While it's a fun story, there's very little evidence in its favour. But the term relates to all kinds of things. It highlights the tradition of growing ivy at these schools, but also ties into the prestige, age and location of these universities. I just find it amazing how well known this term has become across the world, despite the fact it only applies to such such a small number of universities, but I suppose it highlights the power of American pop culture on the world stage. What's also worth highlighting is that the USA isn't the only country to have their most prestigious universities form a special little club. Here in the UK we have the Russell Group, which consists of 24 of the most prestigious unis in the UK, named in honour of the hotel the founders met at, the Hotel Russell. Japan has the Imperial Universities, a group of their oldest. Sky is the name used for three of South Korea's oldest universities, with that name being an acronym of Seoul University, Korea University, and Yonsei University. Germany had the TU9, meaning Technical Universities 9, as there are nine of them, and Australia has the Group of Eight, their eight top universities. Australia once again coming off a generic name for a thing, who, who would have thought? All these universities are impressive to say the least, but ideally, it shouldn't matter which one you go to, if you even choose to go to one at all. Personally, I'm more a University of American Samoa kind of guy. Go Land Crabs. 
This video topic was suggested by Pedro Marcelino Figolea over on my Patreon. Every Wednesday, I put up a video request post over on my Patreon for my awesome patrons to leave video ideas on. I then pick one of those ideas to be turned into a video the following Wednesday. So if you have a great idea for a Name Explain video and wish to enjoy Name Explain videos ad free, as well as get exclusive content and your name at the end of these videos, then why not support the channel on Patreon? It takes just $1 a month to help the channel in a huge way and gets you all of these amazing benefits. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon. So a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.